I, I know you think this whole graduation party's really silly, because it's 16 years too late, but I gotta tell you, I think it's right on friggin' time. Kate graduates, but then things start to turn south. So let's break down season three, episode 14 of This Is Us and find out just what happened. <laughs> What's going on you lovely people? Lisa here and This Is Us is finally back after all those like random breaks in between episodes and they're finally promising us that it'll be on every week until the season finale which I think is like five more episodes. So yeah, but then we have to wait like months and months for the next season, but I guess we gotta take what we can get. Now if you remember, we last left off with Kevin relapsing after the whole situation with Uncle Nikki and Beth picking back up with her dream of dancing and becoming a dance teacher. But as expected, the bumps in the road continue because, well, this is us, of course. Let's just go ahead and break it all down. So for our flashbacks, we first go way, way back to a happy moment when Jack is looking for a camcorder to be able to record the Big Three's big life moments. And then we flash forward to graduation day from high school for the Big Three, where, once again, they're looking for a new camcorder, but this time it's obviously Rebecca alone because Jack's passed away and she is very, very emotional, not knowing, you know, what camera to even pick. And she runs into another parent who helps her out and then he kind of asks if she wants to go get coffee and it kind of throws Rebecca off. It's, it's obvious that she's not ready to even entertain the idea of dating again, especially since this is literally right after Jack died. And then in this flashback, Rebecca's not the only one having a tough time. Kate is mad at Kevin because he's following Sophie to New York and wants to be an actor and Randall's going off to college. So basically she's gonna be the only one left. And she doesn't wanna go to graduation and walk across the stage because she feels like everyone's gonna be looking at her, throwing pity her way, being like, that's the girl whose dad just died. And of course she also is kind of embarrassed that she has no plans for what to do. She doesn't have any college plans, no life plans like her brothers. Then comes the day of graduation. They have to go to two different ceremonies since Randall is valedictorian at a different school. Now this is basically the first big life event that Jack isn't there for and it really affects Rebecca. She ends up having to walk out of Randall's ceremony. Thankfully before it actually starts, she kind of has this panic attack, just just loses it. Miguel comes out to comfort her and he suggests that she maybe look up, you know, a grief counseling group or something and get someone to talk to because it's obvious she's got a lot of emotions that she's kind of like balling up inside and now she's exploding. But Rebecca, all she wants is for time to rewind. But Miguel is able to calm Rebecca down enough to go back into the ceremony. And then after that, they drop Kate back off at the apartment and Kate goes inside and ends up watching some home movies. That night, after watching all these movies, Kate kind of has a change in attitude and goes to the graduation party where her brothers are, while Rebecca stays at home and ends up watching those home movies as well, and she bawls, and then she realizes she does need to talk to someone, so she calls Miguel, asking him to take her to a grief counseling meeting if there's one that night. At the graduation party, Kate finds Kevin, and he's kind of sitting outside by himself looking sad, and he tells her that he's been thinking and maybe he will stay home, but Kate tells Kevin that he needs to go to New York. It's not his job to stay and protect her anymore. Randall then comes over and they ponder what's gonna happen when they get older, especially since Randall knows that Kevin and Kate kind of have this, you know, uh, twin telepathy thing, you know, the twin sense, and he kind of feels like he could be left out. But they kind of vow that no matter where they are in each other's lives, they'll fill each other in and always be there for each other. Now in the present, we kind of get to see that theme of time and being there for each other echoed. On the East Coast, Randall and Beth are trying to figure out their new schedule now that Beth will be teaching dance classes so many nights a weekend weekends. They end up mentioning maybe trying to find a sitter or a nanny kind of type person to help with the girls since they're gonna be so busy. Randall then ends up getting a call from Deja who has left school because her teacher published her personal essay in the school's online paper without Deja's consent. And now the kids are looking at Deja all weird, calling her Pontiac and all that kind of stuff because the essay was so personal to Deja that she wrote about when her and her mom lived in their car. So Randall heads to the school to kind of fix this situation or find out just what happened. There he finds Miss Cunningham, the young teacher, and tells her how Deja ran away from school crying because the kids were calling her names because of this essay. And then we see Miss Cunningham start to cry and she explains that she published the essay because she thought it was so beautiful and Deja's work was amazing, but that she realizes she should have asked for permission first, so she deletes it from the online paper. She then informs Randall that Deja is very smart, and even though it was suggested that she be held back for seventh grade, all the teachers feel that she's ready to skip ahead a grade the next year and actually enter 
high school, which kind of makes Randall proud. He's like, oh, I got a really smart daughter that's so cool. Now Randall brings all this up to Deja, but she doesn't really want to do it because she thinks she's just getting this kind of special treatment because of the color of her skin and her story and that people are just kind of feeling pity for her. But Randall's like, that's not always the case, but she brings up and equates it kind of to how Randall, all the articles that were written about him when he was running for office and stuff were telling the story of like how he was dropped off at a fire station. But Randall's kind of like, well, it shows my journey, but that's kind of not what Deja wants. They end up having another talk and then Deja admits that she really doesn't want to skip a grade because she's finally getting into a routine, something she's never really had before and she doesn't want things to change. Beth then comes home ecstatic from her first day of teaching and Randall fills her in on everything that's going on with Deja. Randall then explains that a sitter would be probably too expensive so he suggests that Beth put a pin in her dance teaching for right now, basically put it on hold but not indefinitely. Um, to which Beth is kind of like, oh, so you still get to live out your dreams, but I have to put mine on hold. And I mean, she does have a point there. She has sacrificed a lot for Randall to have his dream of running for council or wh whatever it is. I can't remember what, exactly the office again, but um, I could see why she's mad, you know? But then we don't really get to see what happens next as far as Beth's, you know, what she says to Randall because Randall gets a call from Rebecca about Kate. So then moving over to the West Coast, we have Kevin still in the middle of his kind of bender where he's been lying to Zoe and Kate and everybody saying that, you know, he's just been having meetings with these big producers like Soderbergh all week and everything. Well, Kevin's definitely got to think quicker on his toes when Zoe calls and says that her meeting was pushed back so she's actually flown to California for Kate's graduation. So Kevin's like, oh crap. She wants to come to the hotel and he ends up trying to divert her and says to meet him at the college anyway since he's got to run out to some other meeting or something. Now Kate kind of senses with her little twin sense that something is wrong with Kevin but they keep getting interrupted by everything and Kevin even gets caught in a little bit of a lie when Zoe asks him how you know the spa date was between Kate and, and Kevin. And Kate's kind of like a spa date? That didn't happen so Kevin of course has to come up with more excuses and then he pretends like he gets a text that has to go to another meeting but instead he goes back to his hotel to drink. Now over to Kate. So Toby's planned this big graduation ceremony for her and the other three graduates from community college but Kate thinks it's kind of like going overboard. She doesn't want it. She doesn't think it's necessary but you know it's kind of a big deal and Rebecca's even flown out for it and Kevin's there and Toby is just stoked to be the master of ceremonies. It's gonna be a party right? Well during the ceremony Kate keeps trying to text Kevin after he's left to see if he's coming back but is getting no answers and of course her twin sense is like something's not right here but before she can go to find Kevin we get a sweet moment with Rebecca and Kate when Rebecca asks Kate for a selfie and it's like oh we're finally getting that picture of you in your cap and gown and then Rebecca talks about you know her state of mind back at that first high school graduation and going through life and how everybody goes through life and deals with tragedies and stuff at their own pace and how she's really proud of Kate for the last few years and that while Kate thinks it's too late for this graduation, Rebecca thinks it's right on time. Kate then goes off to Kevin's hotel room and finds out what exactly is going on. Kevin admits that the whole Nikki situation did trigger him but he doesn't ever say the word addiction or alcoholism. It seems like he doesn't want to fully admit that he has that problem. And when Kate says that she needs to tell Zoe, Kevin basically begs and says that he'll do anything he can that Kate wants but just don't tell Zoe because he feels like Zoe will leave him. So he promises to like do a week of meetings and get a sponsor and all this and, and Kate's like well we're gonna go to a meeting now. So she looks up one and they start driving to an AA meeting and then she starts to feel a pain in her stomach. So they pull over on the side of the road and Kate thinks that her water has broken. So Kevin goes to call Toby and Toby's like well you gotta take her to the hospital but Kevin has to admit that he can't drive the car because he's been drinking which of course is not something that Toby wanted to hear. So Kevin has to call an ambulance and they end up meeting Toby at the hospital and you can tell that Toby is pissed at Kevin, rightfully so. Kevin then goes to see Kate in her hospital room and they've been able to delay Kate's labor and then we see Randall show up in her big three as they said they always would be there for each other or there for each other. And thus kind of ends the big events of this week's episode. We have Randall and Beth at odds yet again. Kate's pregnancy is in danger. Kevin's relapse is really bad. And right now only Toby and Kate know. And you know what? I gotta say this episode, Mandy Moore once again knocks it out of the park this episode. Like Rebecca has all these kind of different sides to her and Mandy is able to play each one so well. Like you can feel the joy in older Rebecca and how proud she is of Kate graduating. And then you can really feel the pain and 
and how hurt she is when, you know, she's going through the missing Jack and being at this big life moment of her kids without her partner there. Like, how Mandy Moore hasn't been nominated for an individual Emmy, Globe, SAG, whatever, and some of the other actors, not saying that they're not good, but, like, she hasn't herself been nominated for one. It's just, it's beyond me because I think she has done some great work. Like, this episode, especially the one where Jack does die, that episode alone, I feel like she should have got nominated for but fingers crossed for this next award cycle that she finally gets that recognition but man i gotta say i think y'all know this that this show can be very exhausting sometimes with how heavy it is it's just kind of like can't kate have something nice please don't take her baby away that would just be too too cruel like she's already lost the baby right she lost her dad like She's finally in a good place. We've seen Kate at the beginning of the show. She wasn't too likable, honestly, and now here she is. She's she's evolved and, and grown, and it's just kind of like, don't do this to her. But I kind of feel like that's what the promo for this next episode is alluding to. You want to keep the baby in as long as possible. Timing is everything. Like, I know you're worried about her. We're all worried about her. Kate just went into emergency surgery. What? Oh, please just let this be a misdirect and that Kate and the baby are actually okay. I mean, we do know though that in the flash forwards, no one seems that happy. So could the events of this episode, these ones coming up, like what's happening with this baby and then Randall and Beth and Randall wanting Beth to put those dance dreams on hold again. Are these like the little starts to those downfalls that we kind of see everybody being sad in those flash forwards? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. But um, yeah, that's kind of all I got for this week's recap guys so hit me up down in the comments let me know your favorite parts of this episode uh your least favorite parts what do you think's gonna happen with kevin uh do you think zoe would leave him if she if he tells the truth do you think kate's baby's gonna be okay what do you think's gonna ha happen with randall and beth sound off down below then after that don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos and check out more of those videos actually right over here as always my name's lisa thanks for hanging out with me guys right here on channel media and i'll see you next time